Hey, my name is Bruce. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of our Knowledge Basics. Today, we're going to be talking XLRs and how to solder XLR cables. So when people say XLR, they're most commonly referring to an audio cable. But XLR actually just means a multi-pin connector with latching devices, which is what audio, professional audio, normally uses. We commonly use a three-pin XLR for audio, like you see here, three-pin DMX, which we're going to talk about, or five-pin DMX. Those are our most common ones. Now we also have six-pin COM connectors and four-pin COM plus power and data and five-pin, and we're not going to get into all the details. Our most common ones, three-pin XLR audio, three-pin XLR DMX, and five-pin DMX. So I want to talk about a couple of different types of the actual ends or connectors. What I've got here in my hands, I've got a, a male three pin and I've got a female three pin. And this is what you're going to be using if you're actually just building a wire from scratch. But a lot of times in integration, we have uh, wall plates, we've got chassis mounts and stuff. So right over here, I've got um, some chassis mounts. This is what it looks like when it's just all by itself. Uh, you can see you know, this is the female side, and then right there, this is where we would be doing our soldering. We're gonna talk about some details of how to solder these up. This is what it would look like if it's actually built into a wall plate, which is real common for us in the integration world. And so you'd have multiple on the back end of it. And then I also have a five pin chassis mount right here, and this is for DMX lighting. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences and how you wire stuff up a little bit differently for lighting versus for audio. So these are chassis mounts. These are just traditional field mounts for regular cables. Now, a couple of things to note uh, inside here. We're gonna take these apart. It, it, they would normally come in a little bag and um, you take these uh, apart. And on the female side and on the male side, there are going to be uh, numbers actually physically on these. And so in a minute, we're gonna show you a picture of what the numbers look like. But it tells me one, two, three on the face here. It tells me one, two, three on here. And it also tells me one, two, three on the back here. And the reason that that's really important is we're gonna be talking about pinout. And the pinout becomes real important whether we're doing audio or whether we're doing lighting. And we wanna make sure that we're following the correct pinout. So always make sure you're looking for those numbers. All right, so for tools, when we're gonna be soldering our XLR cables, we are going to need uh, a wire stripper because we're gonna need to strip back our wire. Uh, sometimes it helps to have a pair of scissors. Uh, we're gonna be cutting some heat shrink and stuff. Uh, I've got some vice grip needle nose here that we're gonna be using to uh, secure our XLR connectors. So we've got those. Uh, these little needle nose are a great little tool to have if you can have them, not absolutely necessary, but the wire is gonna get really hot and you might not wanna touch it. But really importantly, you need to have a soldering station. You need to have a way to solder it. And then we're also gonna be using a heat gun. The heat gun is so that we can shrink our heat shrink so that everything can be prepped properly. So the first thing we have to do is we have to prep our wire. And so I've got my wire strippers here. I'm going to uh, strip this outer jacket back you can see I pulled that off. The first thing that pops out here is my drain, and this is a important piece. And so I'm gonna kind of curl that and leave it off to the side. Then I've got my uh, Kevlar right here, and I've got my foil. And the Kevlar and the, the foil, I don't need for my termination point. So I'm gonna prep those a little bit like this, and I'm going to cut those off and make sure I put them in the trash. You don't want to leave trash all over the field. So um, we're going to put those off to the side and make sure you keep that nice and clean. And then I've got my, uh, my negative and I've got my positive and then I've got my drain for my three pin XLR. And uh, once again, I'm going to strip these guys back. Pull all these leads together and I can make a nice clean cut so that they're all the same length. 
and now I've got a really nice length of uh, you know, wire for me to work with. So now that we've got our wire stripped back, we've got our lead separated, we need to go ahead and get our heat shrink. So we've got three different types of heat shrink here. The first th type is the real thin stuff, and we're gonna be applying this to our drain. And uh, today we're using green. Green or yellow is uh, kind of the common colors for the drain. We're gonna be doing another piece to prep uh, this section right here so that it's a nice clean section. And then the last piece of heat shrink that I need is I need to be able to heat shrink my label. And so really important note to heat shrink your label. Uh, these audio systems, these you know, AV systems, we're expecting to last 15, 20 years. Guess what? Labels don't last 15 or 20 years. So by us heat shrinking it, we preserve it so it can uh, you know, last that long. So we're gonna slide our, our label on. We can deal with that a little bit. We're gonna put our drain uh, heat shrink on. And then this guy right here, we're gonna be putting on and it's gonna overlap our drain and then it's gonna keep that foil section nice and clean. So I've got my heat gun over here. Uh, don't need to talk too much about how to use a heat gun. I love using them just pointing straight up. Gives me a lot of control. And all I'm doing is shrinking down. Sometimes you wanna make sure your leads don't touch each other during the heat shrinking process because the jackets can actually get melted to one another. So kinda nice to keep them uh, spread out. But then there you go. Now we've got this whole thing uh, prepped and ready to go from a heat shrink standpoint. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tin the wire. We're gonna tin the wires now. See what I can do here. I can kinda put it through there and I can use my solder spool as a place and now I've created an extra little thing. All my wires are up in the air. And now I've got two free hands. I'm gonna take my soldering iron and the soldering iron goes to the wire itself. And what I'm doing is I'm heating up the wire. And then as I'm heating up the wire, then when I begin to apply solder, I'm actually not melting the solder on the tip of the soldering iron. I'm melting the solder into the wire. So that's the way that we want to tend wires. We want to heat up the wire, then we want to touch our solder to it, and it's going to you know, pull that solder all the way into it. There it goes. Oh, that's great. All right, so that was pretty simple. Now our wire is tinned, and we can move on to our connectors. All right, so I've tinned my wire. I've put it off to the side. I'm going to take, uh, this is a, a female connector. And um, if you ever spend any time with out, us out in the field, we will reiterate all the time, make sure you fill your cups. And what we mean by that is we have all these cups here on our connector, and we wanna make sure that our cups are nice and full of solder, once again, to make our final step as easy as possible. So I'm just gonna be putting my solder tip inside there, and I'm just pouring solder down into that tip so that my cups are full. Oops, a little hot. There you go. Now our last step is to go ahead and put our leads to our cups. But before we can do that, we need to know what lead goes inside of what cup. I've been doing this for a long time and I still recommend every time for you to Go to Google and type in audio XLR pinout because we're going to be doing an audio line. Or if you're doing DMX, do DMX XLR pinout. You're going to get a, a little pinout graph and it should look like this. And you need to make sure that you follow that. And so it's going to give you a one, a two, and a three. And that's what your colors need to correspond to. Check it every time. All right, so we've looked up our pinout. We made sure we got, we understand the numbers that are on our, you know, connector. We talked about that earlier, and now we're ready to solder. So I'm gonna put my boot on first. 
Uh, don't forget to put your boot on, because if you forget to put your boot on, you're going to have to take it all apart and do it again. Gives you a lot of practice, but <laughs> you'll be annoyed with yourself by the end of the whole thing. I've got my wire tinned, I've got my cups filled, and I'm going to show you why it's so important to do that. What happens is it makes it so easy to solder. Right now, I'm going to go to uh, my, you know, cup one here. Oops, that fell off. And even though it fell off, it just goes in so easy because my wire is tinned, my cup is filled, okay? So if you notice, I paused. The important part about that pause is you wanna make sure that your uh, solder has a time to cool down and it actually holds the joint. If you move too fast, then you can pull your wire out right after you just soldered it. So you just wanna pause and hold there. Now I'm gonna take my two wire and once again, this is a real fast process. So I'm gonna take my soldering iron. All I'm doing is melting that cup of solder. I'm pushing that wire down to the bottom of the cup. I'm holding it. It's now cooled. And I can get ready for my last wire. I am gonna show you what it could look like with these needle nose. Um, it, it, I've got callus on my fingers because I do this so much, so I don't really feel the heat the, the same way that other guys do. But if, you, uh, if, you're, if your fingers aren't old and callous like mine, you can use these needle nose. You can see I've kind of got them nice and gripped there, so I've got good control. I'm going to take my soldering iron, I'm going to melt that cup, and I'm going to push that all the way down into the bottom there. I can fill the bottom of the cup. I'm pausing to make sure that it's got time to cool. And there we go. We got a nice... Uh, you know, terminated female here. And then I'm gonna put this in. And this is really to just uh, use as a strain relief when you put your boot on and you'll see here in just a second, this pinches that wire to hold all that into place. So I'm gonna put my boot here, got my head, slide all that together. And look at that. We've just made a female XLR connector and that boot's got that nice strain relief for me so I don't have to worry about my solder getting broken all the time. And uh, yeah, pretty cool, huh? So earlier I prepped this heat shrink for my label. Now I'm gonna take my label, I'm gonna peel it off and I'm gonna put my label down here at the end of my cable. Do my best to make it nice and straight Put my sticker on, perfect. Now, I don't want that number to ever fade to where the client can't read it long-term or whoever's you know, using the system long-term. So I'm gonna take that heat shrink, pull my heat shrink gun back out over here, and I'm gonna melt this down. Perfect. So now, as you can see, that label, it's, it's you know, held in there and it's gonna be there forever until somebody destroys it and you know, puts in a new system, which is fine. So now we're gonna talk about soldering DMX. The process is exactly the same, but it's uh, different in the way that it's pinned out. If you remember when we were doing audio, I said go to Google and type in audio XLR pinout. If you're gonna be doing DMX, go to Google and type in DMX XLR pinout. What you're gonna find is that two and three are swapped. And we wanna make sure that we're doing that uh, whenever we're doing DMX out in the field. So uh, I've already looked it up. I now you know, know, okay, DMX, I'm gonna swap two and three. My cable is already tinned. My cups are already full. So I'm gonna do the exact same process, but I'm gonna be doing this in a little bit different order. So one is gonna be my ground. I'm gonna put that all the way to the bottom. That's perfect. Hold there and let it cure. Now the next one is gonna be two. Is gonna be my negative. And once again, all the way to the bottom. And then lastly, I'm gonna be doing three as my positive this time. Perfect. 
Perfect. And this time I did a chassis mount so I didn't have to put my boot on. Um, so if that was connected to a wall plate, you would have a DMX XLR connector. Hey, if you feel like you learned something today, go ahead and hit like, hit subscribe, and then take all this knowledge and go apply it out in the field. That's really what it's all about, is making you feel more confident out there and uh, you know, give you the skills that you need to be an integrator and installer. Thanks for joining us.